Way Yours, a program of inspiring music and an eternal message of hope. On this program, Shirley Svoboda shares her testimony. Our musical guests are Class Brass Gospel Band, and Reverend Maggie's message is titled, God's Faithfulness and Everlasting Love. Now let's join Reverend Mabley and her guest, Shirley Spoboda. Well, we ever in for an interesting testimony today. This dear lady, I've come to know her in a very short while. We have a kinship in the Holy Spirit, and she's a treasure to me and a great treasure to God and her family. And today I want to welcome to Eternally Yours Telecast, Mrs. Shirley Swoboda. Welcome. Thank you. Well, Shirley, we want to hear about you. Where do you come from and how did you come to know Jesus? Well, I was born in Pincher Creek, a small town in the foothills of southern Alberta, the third youngest of seven children. Mm. Uh, I didn't really get to know my father as he was in the Canadian Army, but I do remember my grandmother living with us always. Mm. And as far back as I can remember, say two or three years of age, I was in Sunday school at the Nazarene Church. Good, strong Christian upbringing. So uh, I loved those Bible stories. I loved to sing the songs like this little light of mine, running over, Jesus loves me. And all I can say is I'm truly thankful that I was given a mother and a grandmother that loved the Lord and loved His Word. And it made every such a difference. Every morning, every morning, they would just gather all seven of us around our big kitchen table. And after they'd fed us a big bowl of porridge, because we didn't have very much, uh, they would give us our spiritual food, which was they'd read a scripture from the Bible. We'd recite a Bible verse that we had memorized the night before. We'd all say the Lord's Prayer together, and then they'd ask God's blessing and guidance on us before they sent us off to school. So You know, I can tell that you had a Christian upbringing when I mm -hmm. first met you, because you are so peaceful inside, mm -hmm. and your faith level is so strong from all that scripture from when you were little. I never had that, Shirley, mm -hmm. but you know, it just really amazes me how absolutely wonderful it is to have Christian godly upbringing. Mm -hmm. And so, you didn't always have it easy because there were so many kids. So tell me more That's about right. your family, your daddy and all. Well, um, I knew that Jesus loved me, but I was also told that we were separated from God because of, our, because of the sinful nature that Ad, of, uh, from Adam. So when I was 13 years of age at a daily vacation Bible school that we went to every year, um, there was an altar call, and so I went forward, and I accepted Christ as my personal Savior. Um, and then... A few months later, I was baptized, water baptism I received in, in the Baptist church then. We had mm -hmm, switched over mm -hmm. to the Baptist church. But, you know, at that time, I didn't know what to expect, have, being now a child of God. I didn't know if my life was going to be roses or whether, you know, there was still, you know, what changes to expect. But I soon found out that um, there was going to be trials and tribulations. My father died then within the next year mm -hmm. that uh, he dropped dead of a massive heart attack at age 49. And he was in the services? In the, in the army, right. Mm. And so then I could I could see the challenge that my mother had of continuing to feed us. Well, there was nine of us all together. Mm -hmm. and With Grandma uh, there. Mm -hmm. Grandma was there. And, uh, you know, I, she never complained. I never heard her complain. She would just keep saying, the Lord will provide. We, you, we will have food on our table the same as he feeds the sparrows. I thought, oh, what a strong woman, you know, I just couldn't believe it. But, you know, God, God was so good. I mean, we never were, we, we were never in want. God takes care of his own. He does. And so, um, so you, what kind of profession did you end up going into? Let's hear about this. You became, I think, a nurse? I did. I, uh, well, I'll just say my sister soon had to stop, you know, uh, leave home, and they got married, and I would say, oh, Lord, um, Please let me go through school, you know, because I love to study. And um, I was so active in the church that, uh, you know, I would attend every meeting there was, uh, young people's, and I started teaching Sunday school. But what really touched my heart was when the missionaries would come and they'd show the pictures of, 
from Africa or Bolivia of these children that were sick, they were lonely, and all oh, my heart went out to them. And I thought, that's what I have to do. I have to help people. That, in my mind, it was going to be on the mission fields, and I had a heart for the, our First Nations. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then, as well as the, um, as the um, missionaries, the evangelists like Oral Roberts would come. And I would see people get out of wheelchairs and walk. Well, my faith just soared higher and higher. It just built stronger on my faith. And then so that God really became a father to me that I didn't have. And I found that I could talk to him at any time, anywhere. Not, it wasn't a verbal, out, audible talking, but in my spirit, in my mind, I knew he was there. And sometimes he would be so close that I'd have to literally look to see if there was somebody beside me. You had a relationship with our Holy Father, mm-hmm. and that, uh, a love relationship. Christianity is a love relationship with our Creator, and you had found that. Praise mm-hmm. the Lord. Mm-hmm. And so, how did John, your dear husband, come into the scene of your life? And how did you do with the nursing? Okay, so I um, went from Pincher to Calgary, because I, then that was where I had, I figured I, if I became a nurse, then I could be a nurse on the mission field. So uh, I had met John then because I, I was tired of the cold winters in Calgary, so I took a jaunt over to Vancouver. And I'm I so met glad John. you did. <laughs> <laughs> and I met John there just playing tennis in Stanley Park. And he himself had escaped from Czechoslovakia because he wanted to be free. He loved the Lord, and he wanted to start a new life in a free country. And I understand that he has a dynamic testimony because mm. I've heard it myself. Yes, that's right. How uh, a bunch of young men were actually uh, oh, yeah. Many murdered. of yeah, many and of he, his... he escaped because he went for a walk. Mm-hmm. So, so you met John. Yeah. But then soon after I met him, I got accepted into the nursing program. So back, <laughs> I left him behind and went back to, to Calgary. But, you know, a month later, my mother passed away. And I thought, Again, I said, oh, Lord, please, you know, this is, this is the goal that I have on my heart. Make it possible. And uh, then my grandmother passed away. So all three of the people that were strong that I had, you know, for mm-hmm. all my life were gone. But, you know, God always comes through. But he know. was there for you. He was there for and me. And he's always there for he's, us if we know Jesus Christ as Lord. That's Heavenly right. Father becomes real and dear to us, and Christ makes him real. That's and right. Christ is real and dear to you. Mm-hmm. I see that so clearly in your life. And I'm really amazed at the staunch, strong faith that you have from a Christian upbringing. Well, he instilled in me, I don't know, and I can't explain it, but there's such a peace no matter what happens in my life. There's no fear. There's no fear. I'm just sort of covered with that peace. Amen. And I see it in you. And Mm. I I love being around you because Mm. of that. Uh, Just in a nutshell, though, tell me, how did your Christian upbringing and you being married now to John, who loved the Lord very much, and God miraculously brought him Mm -hmm. uh, into Canada, how did this affect your wonderful children? You have how many? I have uh, three children. Mm -hmm. Um, We Well, they grew up... um, because we started a business, you know, they grew up right within the business of, mm-hmm. amongst seniors. So they have a heart for people as well now. Mm-hmm. But no, we went through trials. Every family does. Mm-hmm. Um, but all your kids uh, come to know Christ? Oh, they're all, yes, they're all Christians. Yeah, Praise their the family, Lord. their little ones, they're praising the Lord every day. I took them to Tim Hortons and they're praising the Lord in Tim Hortons. And everybody's <laughs> looking at me. So <laughs> but, the Christian upbringing you had... Flowed it into flows. you and John raising your wonderful kids. You have a, a gal, Marie, and mm-hmm. then you have two sons, Brian that's, and Kevin. Right. And uh, I've met two out of three. And I could see the love of Jesus through you and John has flowed into the offspring and that they too are following suit to raise their households mm-hmm. in the nurture of the we Lord We were Jesus. always a very close-knit family. Mm-hmm. It's we, wonderful. We loved each other. The we get along orders. very well. <laughs> and uh, people are amazed at how we can live and work together and, and still and then speak to one another. But Now, now you're raising your family and uh, God opened up a miraculous ministry carrying work for you. We're going to hear that next telecast. So okay. God bless you, dear one. Thanks for being on Eternally Yours, my dear friend and sister in Christ. And now you're on team with me, and it's awesome. God bless you.
Thank you, Vic Schofield, and your wonderful band, uh, Class Brass Gospel Band. Praise the Lord that uh, him and his group uh, just go about the lower mainland, wherever God bids them, and they allow their anointed music to share God's love. Thank you. And now, sharing a message from my heart that I have called God's Faithfulness and Everlasting Love. Oh, what a nice topic. <laughs> it is my joy to be his mouthpiece to you, to share somewhat in a few minutes about God's faithfulness and everlasting love. God is love. God is love. And it's God's faithfulness and God's love that did all the blessings that Shirley Swoboda shared. Helping her and her husband now, who's in his 90th year, and, and her well in her 70s as I am, helping them to put together a two-block-long Caval retirement home, a place where people are treated with deep love and respect, like a home from home, independent living. And God did that for her. And she is at this time on my team, and she has a heart for God. And I, I recognize and I admire that. And I am so thankful. I'm very, very thankful. And she has experienced for even more years than I have God's faithfulness and love. Praise the Lord. And so it started with her, their, her grandma and then herself, now her children and her grandchildren. And you know, that's what I want you to remember. And that's what I want you to realize, folks. Train a child in the way they should go, and when they're old, they'll return to it. And if you're not raising your children, parents, in the nurture of the Lord Jesus Christ, you really need to. Life isn't easy out there. We don't know what our young generations have to face. I pray usually daily for my grandchildren, my offspring, because, uh, you know, life isn't easy on planet Earth, and who knows what it's going to be like down the road. We need to be anchored in God's faithfulness and God's love. Amen? And we just need to do that. For he says in his word, again I say, God is love. So this God who is love, he's all-powerful, he's all-knowing, and he's everywhere. You can't say that about Satan or anything or anyone else. That's only God's description, hallelujah. And so he's never changing. Hebrews 13 verse 8 says, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. People change. Um, things on planet Earth change, circumstances change, political leaders change, but God never changes. He's always the same. He's always faithful. He's always loving. He's all-knowing. He's holy. He's powerful, and He loves you. Oh, yes, He loves you with deep love. And this God who loves you and me, He came to Earth in the form of a human being. We, we can never say to God, you don't understand what it's like down here. He does. He lived and he suffered, and he suffered pain, and he was whipped 39 times. And I understand you can pretty well group every sickness on planet Earth in 39, 39 areas. And he was whipped by his stripes for us for to be healed. He died for your sins and mine, that we, through receiving him, could have the gift of life eternal. It's so simple. The truth is, John 6, 23, the wages of sin is death. We earn our death, folks. And that's eternal separation from God. That's deeper than being six feet under in the ground. But the same verse gives us hope. But the gift of God is life eternal through our Lord Jesus Christ. I pray to God before the end of this telecast, before the end of this day, every one of you that are hearing this good news will have the gift of God through Jesus Christ as Lord as I have and Shirley has, because we can bear witness after decades and decades of God's faithfulness and everlasting love. Hallelujah. John 10.10, 10, Lord Jesus came that we would have life and have it more abundantly. And that doesn't mean everything will always be roses, but it means God will be with us and give us His strength. Wow. His strength, not just human strength, but supernatural strength by the Holy Spirit to go through life and become more like Jesus. Jesus came that you and I would have life, have it more abundantly. And our joy would be full. And in 3 John verse 2, the disciple wrote down, and it clicked one day in my mind. Thank you, Father. It clicked. If the disciple desired that, how much more does this God of love desire that? And it says there, 3 John verse 2, I wish above all things that you be in good health and prosper even as your soul prospers. That's God's desire for you and me. 
And so, to be in good health and prosper, even as our soul prospers, we need to have Jesus Christ in our hearts. We need to have him as Lord and Savior and baptizer in the Holy Ghost and healer too and strengthener. He wants, strengthener, he wants to be all that for you and me. I bear witness, God is real. God is real. He loves you with an everlasting love. And he will never forsake you nor leave you once you receive him. People, if you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord, I have to tell you the truth. You're on your way to hell and you don't, maybe don't even know it. And some people are kind of like rushing because life is so busy these days. And they're on their way to hell. It's like they're rushing and the flames are there licking. And, and people like me who would stand there and say, don't go there. There's a better way. It's to receiving Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, asking him into your heart. He will come in by the Holy Spirit. Your spirit that was dark from sin when you asked God to forgive you, the holy blood of Jesus will wash you whiter than snow just as if you never sinned. That's what justified means. Jesus Christ took your sins, your sicknesses, pains, griefs, and sorrow, mine in his own precious body. By his stripes we are healed. The most important healing is spiritual. Then usually follows getting more physically healed and in our soul. He came to restore our soul. And when you confess with your mouth and you mean it, Jesus Christ, you're my Lord, the angels in heaven rejoice. And you're born of God. It's a forever birth. Christianity is a love relationship with our divine creator of heaven and earth. And it's a forever relationship. Then Romans 8, last verse, I think it's verse 34, it says, He will never leave you nor fail you nor forsake you because God is a faithful God, an all-powerful God, a loving God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Make sure you know this God and get to know him more and more. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, God's thoughts towards you and I are for good to give us an expected end. What are you expecting? <laughs> are you expecting things to get worse? And even if you're elderly, are you expecting, oh, well, I'm aging. I got to put up with these aches and pains. Well, come on and join me and let's believe that we can live life in divine health. <laughs> I quote God's scripture in my devotions, and I'm trusting God. I'm going to live out my life, no matter what age I am, in a quality of good health and still have my wits about me. Hallelujah. And that dear lady that gave her testimony, her husband is in his 90th year, and he's got his wits about him. Hallelujah. I know a man of God, Arnie Bryant. He's 93, going strong. He's still in charge of Prayer Canada that has formed across the nation of Canada over 200 prayer posts. I tell you, God is faithful. Hallelujah. <laughs> and he has everlasting love for you and me. And he has his plan for you. Yes, God has a plan for you. Before you were put in your mother's womb, he has a whole plan already. And it's still available and waiting if you would just believe and come to the Lord. Yes, it's available and waiting. The gifts and calling of God are without repentance. That means he doesn't change his mind. Whatever it is, whatever it is, whatever it is that God has for you, it's still there. Just believe it and draw near to him and ask him, what is your plan, Lord? <laughs> and you know what? Doing the will of God is a delightful thing. I got two scriptures you could phone in and I'll make sure I get them to you. One says that doing, doing the will of God is a delightful thing. And the other one says doing the will of God is not grievous. Oh, on the on, onset on it, you might look and say, hmm, God wants me to do that. And you might think, well, I'm not so sure I want to do that. But when you yield to his will, you know what he does? I've experienced this for decades. He puts a joy and desire in your heart to do it. <laughs> you know the way I see God? Honestly, this is from my heart in the Lord. This is how I see God. He's a wonderful God of love and unfailing faithfulness. And he wants to come in our hearts, be our Lord and our Savior, our God. And then he wants to say to us, I've got a plan for your life. And as you yield to me, I'll give you the strength to fulfill that plan. And then I'll reward you for being faithful. <laughs> That's how I see God. It's like 99% his strength and power and love. 1% us. And he gives us the strength for that 1%. You know, God can do anything. God can do anything. And when I say that, I often think of that movie that's a classic that's shared often at Christmas time. It's a wonderful life. And where Jimmy Stewart said to Mary, what do you want, Mary? Do you want me to last through the moon? I'll last through the moon for you. 
my Lord Jesus, my God, could last through the moon for you and me. He could make a star after our and name it for us. He can do anything. All things are possible with God. With God, nothing, I say, nothing is impossible. We have his word on that. It says it very clearly in the word of God, over and over. Absolutely nothing is impossible for God. And he listens when we pray. He listens. He listens intently. Call upon him. Walk in his love. Do you know his love? Do you know Jesus Christ is Lord? He knocks on the door of your heart, as he did on mine so many years ago. He knocks on the door of our heart. You're the one that can open it. Satan, the enemy of our soul that came to rob, steal, kill, and destroy, John 10:10. 10, 10. He doesn't do it like that. He's not like God in love and kindness. He comes pushing in to trouble your life and get you down. He don't want you listening to what I'm saying. So you stay listening in the name of Jesus, my Lord. But because Jesus came that you would have life, have it more abundantly. And Christianity is a relationship. And you be sure you call in the counselor if you need help in your walk with God through Christ. Open your heart to Jesus Christ. Open your life to God's faithfulness. You'll never be the same. You'll never be the same. John 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. And as many as received him, pay attention to that word, received him, God gave you the right, the power to become a child of God. And John 3 verse 3 and 5 says, John, God, Jesus Christ was speaking to Nicodemus, and he said, Except a man be born again, he cannot see or enter the kingdom of God. And you're born again when you receive Jesus Christ as Lord. And that's the everlasting, everlasting life with God forever and ever. Make sure you have this blessing. Have Jesus Christ as Lord. Amen. Eternally Yours Television is entirely supported by interested viewers and listeners like you. In appreciation of your gift of $20 or more, we are pleased to offer a gift. Please prayerfully consider your role in supporting Eternally Yours Television. Dear ones who have been watching this telecast, I have shared very strongly from my heart of uh, Christianity being a love relationship with our Holy Creator through having Jesus Christ as Lord in your heart and in your lives. And I know as I've shared that word that you're all probably at one place or another where you need to make a first time commitment to Jesus Christ as Lord, perhaps a recommitment to Jesus Christ as Lord. If you've backslidden, don't go that way. <laughs> you have more troubles than you ever want to because you reap what you sow, amen. God's hand is still on you, I believe. Once saved, always saved, but you miss out on a whole lot of blessings, a whole lot of strength from God if you're backsliding. And the other way might be just someone, you just need a deeper recommitment to Christ. And so wherever you're at, why don't we together really yield to Holy Father to bless our lives, strengthen us, heal us, deliver us, set us free where we need liberty. And remember, if we continue in His Word, we will know the truth. The truth will make us free. <laughs> and God wants us to know truth. You know who truth is? It's a person. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, the life. None get to Father through, but through me. So the, the saying out there, all oh, there are many ways to God, that's not what Jesus said. <laughs> Jesus said there's no other name under heaven by which, God, which mankind must be saved. The name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no other faith that deals with sin through the blood of Jesus Christ but Christianity. And when you ask God to forgive you your sins, the holy blood of Jesus washes you whiter than snow. And when you sincerely confess, Jesus Christ, you're my Lord, you're born of God. I want to give you an opportunity to do that right now, wherever you're at, whatever your need is, dear ones. A recommitment to the Lord, backsliders coming home, or first time commitment. I want you to pray along with me with all your heart and watch God change your life. Simply say, 
Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose from the dead. And Heavenly Father, I confess I have sinned. And you are just to forgive me. Wash me whiter than snow in your holy blood. This is very important. Jesus Christ, come in my heart. Come in my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Forgive me for straying from you. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill me and help me follow my Lord Jesus Christ. Give me a love for your word and a revelation of your love. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. If you've prayed that prayer, Jesus Christ has come in your heart. Phone the counselor and we'll send you information to help you grow in the Lord. God loves you and wants you to grow in Him. If this telecast has ministered to you, would you please prayerfully consider becoming a financial partner that we may continue to reach out for God's glory. It would be wonderful to hear from you. Thank you.